Hello, everybody. This presentation has sound, so hopefully it works. Uh, we'll be talking about deep note. All uh, right, story time. Um, so George Lucas was looking for a place in San Francisco to, uh, let's see, okay, to, uh, to show the um, Empire Strikes Back. So he went to the best theater in San Francisco and look at what the audio situation was. And there were three speakers behind the screen. One was disconnected, one was flipped over, one was facing away from the audience. And they say, okay, we spent all this time working on this audio and, and uh, it sounds terrible. Of course, in the, um, in the theater, you can hear what other people are watching in the next theater, right? So they came up with this THX standard, which is not really a technology, but just a, just a standard that uh, the cinemas have to uh, comply to in order to be able to show his movies. Um, so recently information from, from the engineer who did the audio logo uh, surfaced. His name is James Andy Moore. Um, so he said they, they probably ran out of money for, for all the other stuff and they say, okay, let's get somebody in house to just build us a audio logo. Um, he has been designing this ASP audio signal processing system way back when uh, to work with, uh, with George Lucas's movies. Uh, and he was given a week and say, okay, uh, you have to come up with some logo. And that's what he came up with. His inspirations was uh, Johann Sebastian Bach's, this thing. So the whole idea is that you go from chaos to order, right? the chaos. Yes. Resolves to something beautiful, right? Right. Oops. Not, not you. His other inspiration was this Beatles song, Being Alive. You probably know already. They've seen his face before. On the fourth minute, something like this happens, where everybody in the orchestra is playing random stuff. Again, going from chaos to to order. Um, no, not you. <laughs> All right, so 35 years later, the score was published uh, because they wanted to copyright this logo, uh, this audio logo, and this is what he came up with. So uh, this is not really a, any, any good score that people can play with, but uh, he said, okay, we start with 30 voices because this is what his ASP system was, uh, uh, was supporting no more than 30 voices uh, because I mean 35 years ago uh, computers not that great. Uh, so he starts with random stuff and then eventually resolves to one chord. Um, so this is what we're trying to do. Um, what, we, what we know from his interviews uh, is that again we had 30 voices, this chord at the end has 11 notes uh, he mentioned that those are doubled, those are tripled. Um, didn't quite work to, to 30, but uh, I came up with something that kind of uh, makes sense. Every, the only sound that he starts with is one cello sample that plays D, and uh, uh, then that D is tuned to 150 hertz, which is not what we're used to listening. This is a little bit too perfect um, because the, the D is about 146 point something hertz. Uh, so that's maybe why it sounds a little bit alien for Western people who are used to listening to music at certain frequencies. And he used adjust tuning. We'll talk about this a little bit more. Uh, so in this case, I start with the C sample because I couldn't find a D. Uh, it's not, definitely not the same thing that he used. I found it on the web uh, from some uh, 
um, I guess, Yamaha synthesizer, so it's not really the real thing. So let's start exploring web audio. Um, the first thing you need to do is set up the audio context, uh, and we'll try to play one sound. You have to load that sound from somewhere. So in this case, this is our cello sample. It's a WAV file. It could be an MP3, an OG. Uh, then you have to um, uh, decode the audio data and then create what is called in web audio a buffer source. We'll give it the buffer, which is the file that we just read, and you connect it to the destination. The destination is a speaker or a, um, uh, headphones, and then you, then you start to play the sound. Equally as important is to stop the sound, especially when you're uh, kind of trying stuff. So this is what we have so far. Yeah, this is everything. Again. All right. Um, so the web audio works with something called, uh, um, called a graph, right? Where you connect little nodes into a graph to make a, um, something appear at the destination. In our case, this is the simplest graph we can have. There's a source, which is the audio file we just read, and there's the destination, which by default is the speakers or whatever's plugged in here. Uh, this is inspired by real life. So this is a guitar pedal board. You plug in the guitar right here. Wait, I'm gonna move this thing. No. You plug in the guitar, it goes through different boxes. Each one of those boxes does something different. And then you go out. Uh, same thing with synthesizers, right? A little bit more complicated. You have each of those boxes is doing something and then you plug in one into the other until you accomplish something that you think you like, something that's musical. All right, so next step is uh, to loop the sound that we, that we just heard, which is, is very simple. Once you have loaded the buffer, you just say loop equals true, and then you get this, which is the same sound just looped over and over. Uh, yeah, and by the way, this is not, if you only want to play sound, you don't have to use web audio. Uh, you can use a re regular uh, audio tag in HTML uh, or new audio in JavaScript, so you don't need that API at all if it's just for playing and stopping sounds. It's just more powerful for everything else. And in fact, there's a website that I built because I started uh, learning music. Um, so I built a whole bunch of exercises that don't use web audio at all, right? And you can still have things like, let's say this is a practicing nine chords. That sort of thing. Not the best chord, but anyway. So there's a lot you can do without web audio. Um, now, next thing is we want to change the pitch of this sound because uh, it's just one C in that place and we need a whole lot more. Um, so first of all, we want the C, which happens to be 130 hertz, to be the, the D that they had 150. So in this case, it's a simple ratio because uh, when you have a, um, a sound and vibration of, with some frequency, let's like 110, and you double that frequency, you get the same note an octave higher. And by using those simple ratios, you can get any note in between. So in, the way to do it in web audio is just to say, uh, change the playback rate and basically speed it up just a little bit. The sample that you have, we speed it up a little bit and it sounds higher. And so this is the original, right? And then if we say, okay, just a little bit. Yeah, we accomplish this by, by just changing that playback rate. And uh, there's a, another example that I wanted you to see. Uh, it only works in Chrome because it's web MIDI. So this is a this is a keyboard, and if you look at at the network panel, what type of stuff is downloaded? Let's refresh. You see that there is only an HTML and just a single MP3 here, which is the C that we started with. But it can play all these other nodes, right? So uh, this is pretty cool because in what is it 4K? You can draw the piano. You can. Uh, play those sounds with only a single MP3. You don't need to download a gigabyte worth of um, uh, 
uh, samples. And this is the other thing because it's a it's a web MIDI keyboard, right? So if we look at here, it says that we are not connected to a MIDI device. I happen to have one handy, <laughs> right? So again, this is simple HTML. There's no libraries, there, there's no anything, right? Connect this thing, maybe plug it in. And hopefully, yeah, it says it's connected to something, right? This is the name of this keyboard, right? So now, now I can play this thing. Right, this is just uh, an uh, example of web media. Uh, again, this is terribly simple because media is nothing but uh, just uh, sending messages. Uh, the messages, this is the note, this is the duration, and this is how, how hard or, or soft I, I press it. So it's a, uh, it's really simple uh, API. You just listen to uh, to uh, MIDI devices being connected, and then you listen to any messages from it. You can also send messages back if you have a more powerful MIDI device that that can play sounds. Anyway, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I did it and I wanted to share. And you know. <laughs> all right, so talking about um, web, uh, not. Web. Uh, just tuning um, and tempered tuning. So if you take a string uh, and pluck it, it makes certain sound. If you stop it right in the middle and pluck it, it makes the sound that it's uh, twice as high or the same sound but an octave higher. If you keep shortening the length of this string, you get these beautiful perfect ratios and you get really nice sounds that can play together well. Um, but unfortunately, so this was ancient Greeks discovered this and they were all about perfect ratios and, and, and beauty and stuff. But if you keep cutting it, uh, unfortunately, when you get to the 12th time, you're just a little bit off. So you keep, not everything is perfect. So what people did over the years is uh, when they tune a piano or a church organ or something, uh, then they use the perfect ratios for the, for the first two, called perfect fifth and perfect fourth, and then, uh, for the other one, they're kind of okay. It's it's almost there, but it sounds sounds okay. Uh, and most of these instruments could only play in one key because they're a little bit off in all the other keys. Um, so this is called the just intonation. Uh, at at some point, people said, okay, enough of that. Uh, let's just divide everything equally. Uh, so you have twelve notes, and you divide it by by this ratio. And then you can play on the piano with any key. So every key is a little bit off, but you can play in all of them. Um, so this is a compromise people are willing to make and we still make. But uh, not Andy Moore, he said, no, we're going to use perfect ratios. Uh, so that's why it's a little bit, first of all, the original frequency is not what we used to, and then the ratios are not the same. So if you look at that chord on the score, uh, there's a whole bunch of D notes. There's a few A's. And then there's a little F sharp here. So this is the chord that we want to play eventually. Because these are all perfect ratios, it was very easy to set up the playback rate uh, using those perfect, perfect ratios, which is uh, you know, just one and a half is A compared to D. And then the little one, the F sharp, the only different one is five fourths of the original. All right, that's a lot of code. Um, so we, we load this file, the, the, our single cello sample, go through all the notes in, in our objects here. And for each one, we set the playback rate to be the original times, times whatever rate is here, right? So at the end, uh, I put a, a little input range for everyone so that I can play with this chord. And this is what the, the audio graph looks like now. You have 30 of those, uh, or oh, not 30, it's only the number of nodes here, so I think nine-ish. Uh, each one of them has a gain and they all go to the audio destination. And if we go here, this is the result, right? So I can bring this one and then this one. Thank you. So this is the final chord that we want to, to accomplish. Right? Now, uh, we want to play all these notes plus some gain because the sound sounds uh, 
the sun starts a little uh, soft and then goes higher and higher. So what we're going to do is, uh, oh, it, it's important when you stop a sound, you usually hear a click because you don't stop exactly when the wave is where you want it to be, but you kind of cut off the sound. So one little trick is instead of saying stop, you go, uh, you basically turn down the volume of the sample that you want. So yeah, in our main play loop, we have, uh, we play all the notes and all the voices because every note is doubled or tripled or quadrupled. Um, and then uh, we connect to the, to the one volume and play. So all of these early sources go to the same gain. And then we have a chord. Whoops. Anybody sleeping? No. All right. So then another important thing is to, to uh, automate things or, or schedule things to change over time because that's music, right? This music is sound over time. Um, so we have a um, few uh, available options in the web audio API. You can set a value at some point. You can linearly go to a value, exponentially go to a value, um, or set targeted time, which is the one that I'm using, where you give it a value where you want to go. Uh, where you start, and then this constant is how quickly you go there. Uh, another thing is you can look up an article called uh, The Tale of Two Clocks. Um, if you schedule too many, uh, too many sounds in advance, then when you press stop, they're already scheduled, so they're going to continue to play. So the trick that all people do is you set time out as a second clock and only schedule just a little bit in advance. So when you press stop, uh, it's almost imperceptibly, almost imperceptibly people, uh, things stop because you've only scheduled just a few in advance. In this case, I didn't really care, so I scheduled everything in advance. So now what we want to do is, uh, is start soft and go louder uh, using this gain note, which is just the volume. Uh, we said, okay, the beginning started at zero, then immediately go to point 0.1. So one is full volume. Um, so basically just playing with some constants based on, on the score that was published, right? So then we can see that we start with We can hear it increasing, but we will hopefully. So next time, next thing we need to do is automate the pitch because remember we start with a cluster of nodes between certain ranges, then they go randomly up to a big chord. Um, and that's what uh, Andy Moore said that uh, approximately every second these nodes call into you and you give them different random value. And then at the end, uh, you give them the target pitches and um, leave them play for four seconds. Uh, he also said that the top note is slightly detuned, so it sounds a little shimmery. So it's not the exact frequency, but, but it's a little uh, going like this. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, a few utilities. We start with a bunch of nodes between 200 and, 40, uh, 200 and 400 hertz. Um, we start there. And then, is it? All right. And then for every second between the first and the tenth, uh, we give it uh, a new value for each note. It's not exactly on the, on the one second because I wanted to have a little bit of random stuff going on, so not everything, every second is updated. Um, so first of all, it's a random pitch, and then it's random value of the, the frequency, uh, time, frequency and time. Anyway, uh, at the end, you give it a final, final value that is the big chord. Uh, at the end, because he said detune the last node, um, there is, there is a, a property called detune um, that you, I can set between uh, 100 cents. 100 cents is a, is a half tone between the two closest keys on the piano. So I go a little bit less than that. So let's see what's happening now. Eventually they go to the, to the final chord. Yeah, if you're wondering what's the difference between detune, which changes the frequency a little bit, and the playback rate, which also changes the frequency, they're pretty much the same thing. 
one works in ratios and the other one in, in cents. Um, can we slow down a sound but, re, uh, but have the same pitch or the other way around? Can we change the pitch while keeping the time? In other words, the auto tune that people are using. We don't have an API right now to do it, uh, maybe one day, but, um, but there's uh, Fourier transforms and all that stuff that I don't understand that it's possible. Technically possible, just don't, we don't have a nice fast API to do it. Now, how do we make this better? Uh, compression is something that uh, people use in modern production, and it's also available in web audio. Uh, compression is when you have uh, a very low, uh, quiet sound and very loud sound, uh, and you're trying to listening to listen to a song in your car, right? When the, you're on the highway and every, everything is rumbling and so on, so you have to be able to hear this. So that's why modern music is very compressed so that you'll be able to listen. But if you try to listen to classical music in your car, it's almost impossible because of the huge dynamic range. Something's very slow, uh, soft, turn it up and then it's So yeah, um, I decided not to do it here. It's possible the API exists just because our thing is also kind of dynamic, classical. Panning is going from one speaker to the other. I don't know how many speakers we have. If we have stereo or not, we'll see uh, if we'll hear that, that re result. But uh, yeah, you can, I, I started automating from one speaker to the other, which is also fun. Reverb is to make something sound bigger. And uh, EQ is, um, I don't know what EQ is, right? There's even one in, in iTunes window equalizer, right? We can, we can boost some of the frequencies, make the bass louder and the treble softer and so on. So this is also available in, in web audio. So panning, we started at the beginning on one side and then we moved to the other and then we settled in between. And that's what I tried to do. Um, so then how our signal flow goes is we have all the sources, they go to the volume that is automated, then the panner and then uh, the destination. So we have something like this. All the sources go to the automated volume. We pan them. Uh, another gain is just to make, because when you combine 30 sounds, they start to be a little bit louder. So we have to turn them down a little. And let's see how that works. Let's see if we have, tell me if you hear stereo effects of some sort. Does it come from one side or from the middle, more or less? So we don't have the stereo effect because I guess we only have one speaker or they're, they're connected in mono. Doesn't matter. Um, how do we make a reverb? Um, so in order to explore the web audio API, um, I wanted to automate the, 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 uh, the volume that goes into the reverb. So it starts with a lot of reverb because it's something coming out of nowhere and then coming to you with very little or no reverb so that it's kind of in your face in a bit. Uh, EQing means turning down the lows and the highs, just something that we needed to explore as well. And how do you do a reverb in web audio is use those impulse response files. Uh, this is, you go to a, uh, People have, um, let's see if I, I have an example, actually the one that I'm using. Basically you go to a space that you like how it sounds and you make a loud sound like a clap or pop a balloon and record what happens. So this is the, uh, here's the one that I used. Ah, I don't wanna download this. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Yeah, just the sound that somebody recorded um, and made available on the web. So uh, this is called convolution. Um, so convolution in, in math is you take one function and then you take another function and the second function changes the first one into something else. So that's the, the, the same idea here. We create a convolver. Um, yeah, the same like when, when you load a sample to play, like some, some audio thing, the same way you download a, uh, a file that is the, uh, the impulse response, create a convolver and connect it to whatever you have. Again, a little bit of automation to start with a lot of reverb and go to nothing. Uh, then the EQing part is uh, because when you have an echo from someplace where in the mountains uh, and you, you say hello, and then all the high frequencies are cut off because they dissipate quicker. So in order to make something more realistic, 
uh, you kind of have to cut all the, the upper frequencies. In this case, I cut the bottom as well, so it doesn't muddy up the sound too much. And, um, and this is all happening in parallel now. So we had one thing in the graph here. Then we split it up into the part that goes into the reverb and the part that goes directly. Because if everything goes through the reverb, it's a little too much. Uh, so we kind of mix, mix those things. So WebAudio allows you to do that. So we have the same, started with the same node. We connect it to, to the panel, the thing that goes left and right. And, but also we connect it to, to all the other things and then back to the panel. So that's how you end up with this graph, that you have two parts here. So uh, yeah, this should in here now the reverb probably. If you stop it, you hear a little bit of tail from that. So yeah, that just makes it a little bit more interesting and uh, big. Now, web audio allows you to record all that stuff that you've just gone through. This is great. You, you split the, the signal one more time and one of them goes to, to a media stream destination. How do we get rid of this? Um, so one, one goes to the audio destination, the speakers, the other one goes to the recorder. Uh, the recorder is fairly simple. Where are we? Yeah, you set up this media recorder, you connect it to the whole thing, and then you have a callback function on data available. You just keep all of these things. When people eventually stop the sound, you create a blob, and uh, that becomes your, your file. Um, so now we can record, because this is all random, right? Uh, all these are very random sounds, but if we, if we play it and we like it, then we can, we can stop and say, okay, this is now recorded, so now you can go and save this audio. You keep going until you have something you like. So that's beautiful. One last thing, I'm pretty much out of time. Um, you can visualize the, the web audio data that you've uh, just worked with. Again, we split up before we go to the speakers and the recorder, we can go to an analyzer node. This analyzer node, I'm not gonna go through that, uh, but basically just gets a bunch of uh, an array of frequencies and then it can visualize them at some point. So uh, let's go to our final result and hope that it works. So this is the visualization of the, of the frequencies that we're going to hear. Let's hope it's a good one. The sound is a little bit delayed though. So. Thank you. This is where you clap. <laughs> yeah. um, that was, for some reason that I don't know, it sounds a little bit better in Chrome than in Firefox. Um, there was a little bit of distortion at the very end there. And maybe this sounds a little bit better. That's pretty much, there's a lot more in the web audio. Well, not a lot more, but maybe twice as much. Uh, in, in not only you can go to left to right, but you have spatial planning. You can go X, Y, Z. If you're doing a web VR uh, or a game of some sort, you want sounds to come from all over the place. There's offline context. If, you're, if you don't want to listen to this thing over and over, you can schedule it and record it in, in, in a second instead of uh, a minute. Compression I already mentioned. Oscillator is that's when you have a sine wave that just go beep. Also web audio demos out there use this thing. Um, and distortion, which is, we humans like distortion. We don't like everything to be perfect. So you can do that as well. And yeah, the, the code is on GitHub and there's a demo on my website. You can download, you can look at the slides and, um, and play with the demos and uh, yeah, and keep in touch. Thanks.